Caesarea by boat, but which would probably still take it all the time. So I read this first part of verse 23 last week. I'm going to come back to it. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. And this speaks of the, the emissaries that uh, Cornelius had sent to Peter. The next day he got up and he went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. 
Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, worshiped him. But Peter made him get up, saying, Stand up, I'm only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. <clears throat> now, may I ask why you sent for me? <laughs> Cornelius replied, Four days ago, at this very hour, at three o'clock, I was praying in my house when suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner, by the sea. Therefore I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. So now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord <laughs> has commanded you to say. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to you, God. You know, there's a passage in Scripture where Jesus is teaching him. He talks about <clears throat> the people who are serving him. Well, they're serving the master. And uh, it comes to, you know, there were three of them, and two of them were faithful, and one of them buried his, his what he was given in the sand. And, uh, and Jesus said that the master looked at those two that were faithful and said, Enter into my kingdom because you've been faithful with a little, you will be given a lot. Peter and Cornelius are people who've been faithful in a little, aren't they? As a matter of fact, they've been faithful in quite a lot, quite a lot. It says Cornelius, we were told that he, he prayed fervently, he gave alms to the poor, he, he was a good friend as well as being a centurion for the Jews. And he had faith in their God. And that faith was shown in his behavior. Peter also, while well, he had his stumbling moments and stuff, he, uh, he has, by the time we get to Acts chapter 10, Peter is now one of the pillars in the church and he has been faithful in a good deal already. But both of them are being asked to do very unreasonable things, aren't they? Cornelius is, is told, I, I want you to send, the angel tells him, I want you to send some servants down to Joppa. And when they get to Joppa, I want you to have them find the home of Simon, the tanner. And staying with Simon the Tanner will be a man named Peter. Also, his name is Simon. And, and I want you to bring them back to me. Now, that's pretty specific, isn't it? <laughs> that's really specific. And yet, what does Cornelius do? He not only obeys and sends two servants and a soldier to find Peter, but then he turns around and it says, the following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelia was expecting them and he had called together his relatives and close friends. And in fact, it says later that many had assembled. Get the picture. He sent three people off to a city 35 miles away. 
to find a particular person in a particular place, and he was so confident that the Lord would do it. He was so obedient, he had his friends assemble before Peter showed up. Think he might have possibly ended up looking bad if they hadn't found Peter? All those people, he called them together. Took a lot of courage to do that. Now, Peter, on the other hand, was told that he needed to go to the commander of a hundred soldiers and go into his house and to bring God's word to them. He didn't know Cornelius. He didn't know the reputation because they have to tell him, those emissaries that went had to tell that Peter about Cornelius. He'd never, ever been in the house of anybody but a Jew, ever. And he considered it to be unlawful. Now, I can't verify that by scripture, which means that was probably one of the Pharisees' laws, which were human laws. If it really was a law, it might just have been a custom. It just might have been the way that they were. But he's got to do something that he's never done to see a man he doesn't know to tell him. When God gives big assignments, he also gives confirmation of those assignments. So how was the faith of Cornelius confirmed? Peter showed up, <laughs> right? That's, that's what he, God said, go do this. And he obeyed. And when he obeyed God, Peter showed up. And how was Peter's faith? Well, Peter obeyed. And when he got there, there was a whole assembly of people waiting to hear about Jesus. It was confirmed. When we're faithful in small things, God will give greater assignments. And sometimes he gives assignments that are bigger, than that cost a lot more, or seem to. When... Penny and I had come to the conclusion that God was calling us to go to seminary and for me to come become a pastor. We went ahead and put our house up for sale. We, you know, cut ties with our employment. We did all, all of that stuff to prepare to go. And the week we were supposed to pack the truck and drive up from Florida to Kentucky, um, on Monday of that week, our son Bill went into work and something unusual happened. Now Bill was working for a jewelry company at that time. He was their youngest manager and he was the guy that they would send off if they had a poorly performing store and he would build it up and then they'd send him to another poorly performing store and he would build it up. But on Monday morning he went into work to a meeting with his manager and he got fired. Out of the blue. Two months later, neither the guy that fired him nor the personnel department of that company had any clue why he was fired. They didn't know. But now we're getting ready to leave the state and our oldest son is unemployed. And Penny's almost 50. And you know what? Grown children, you want to look after too, right? So that afternoon, we get this news from Bill in the morning. That afternoon, Mark calls. Now, Mark was living with a buddy of his, and they both worked at this mechanic shop. They did tires and oil changes and those kind of things. Mark didn't have a car, and he also didn't have tools, but the two of them worked together, and so they went to work together every day. 
and he used his buddy's tools and, and had got a ride with him. And he came in Monday, and Monday afternoon they called him in, and they're transferring his buddy to another store. So now he has no car, no way to get to work, and no tools. Meantime, we got Becky and Jenny, both of whom have lived in that house that they're in for their entire lives to that point. Jenny was a teenager, Becky was a preteen, and they were being uprooted against their will to go off to Kentucky. Do you think it came across our minds to maybe say we're doing the wrong thing and we need to stay here and maybe go at a later time or something? But you know, when you're obedient in the little things, when something like that comes along, you just obey. Hard as it was, we packed the truck and we moved off to Kentucky. Within a few days after he lost his job, Bill got a better job with a bigger company with a lot more money. And almost at the same time, we were already, we're on the road now, almost at the same time, Mark's buddy, who was supposed to start the following Monday at the new assignment, that was canceled and he was gonna to continue to go to work there. We got confirmation that we were obedient and that God is faithful. Now, it was longer before Jenny, it was actually a couple of years at least before Jenny came to us and said, you know, Dad, we grew up in that big house with all the new cars and thinking that we had lots of money and that's what they thought. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we were really spoiled. And after going through where we had to have somebody else paying our rent and going to the food bank for food and, and seeing a different side of life, she said, Dad, it has made all the difference for me in my life. She said, I, would, I was, was on the road to being one of the most spoiled people. Whatever they wanted, they got. And she said, this has been really good for us. When God ask something big of us. He expects us to obey. And when he does, we do, when we obey, no matter how big it is, he will confirm it. We will know. And somebody this morning asked me, they said, but, but what if you start to obey and all kinds of bad things begin to happen? How do you know whether that's because you're on the wrong path or, or, and I say, mostly when I believe that I'm obeying God, when all those bad things happen is because the enemy doesn't want me to be obedient. And sometimes when we say yes to God, in those times when things are really challenging, you know, I mean, it's like if you see somebody, you're maybe in the Walmart, and you see somebody that just looks down, perfect stranger. You've never seen this person before in your life, but they just look down. And you get this nudge. Go talk to that person. Go talk to that person. And so you go over and you say, gee, I don't are you feeling all right? And all of a sudden they pour out their soul to you, right? Confirmation. Or they say, yeah, I'm fine. You know that you went to the right person. They needed to know somebody cared, but <laughs> they're, not, they're not open right at the moment. But we have to obey first. God's not going to give us the proof up front. We have to obey first. And whether it's something big or something every day, we'll know. So 
walked into that kitchen, saw a bunch of people I didn't know, three, two or three of them had Parkwood shirts on. <laughs> and I realized I was, you know, the wrong time in the right place. And I said, I'm Bob. And right away it went through my mind, I could say, well, you know, this is not my weekend, I could have walked out the door. But I had such a good time washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Confirmation, just even in the little things. But the Lord will ask us, the more we're obedient in the little things, the Lord will give us greater grace. And obedience has to be our first response. Amen? Amen.